I'm going to start the last of this series of videos on lenses low by first removing the core from the coil. I'm now going to switch the power supply on and off and we can observe what's happening. This is a minimum current flow into the coil. Switch on and the current flow into the coil is produced by a rising voltage. That voltage is running at, if that's 5 volts for the square, around about 2 volts of voltage available across the coil to push current into that coil. By switching the current flow on and off, switch on, switch off, switch on, switch on. Right, being able to stop that on the switching on, so our voltage is at zero. We switch on and the oscilloscope has picked up a substantial spike of voltage which then returns to a steady state current. That voltage is created by the magnetic field being established in the coil, opposing the current flowing into the coil to establish it. So it takes time for the magnetic field to expand and that's probably about one millisecond. I'll try and get the switch off, which is the opposite situation. Switch off. There we go. So switching off, our steady state voltage is running along the screen. We switch it off and the magnetic field as it collapses generates a voltage which is opposing the current flow stopping and then back to our steady state of voltage. Right, I'm going to raise the current flow to a maximum in our non-iron core state. Run the scope. Switch on. Switch on. Switch off. Switch on. Switch off. Sw switch on. Switch off. I'll take the switch off because I can't get the switch on. So switch off. We have a steady voltage. Then we switch off that voltage around about 4 volts. The magnetic field collapsing. Um, causes a voltage generated in the opposite direction. The collapsing magnetic field around these coils is generating that voltage and then we slowly return to a steady state. I think that is sustained a bit longer than necessary as a result of my inability to break the contacts swiftly. Try and get you the switch on voltage. There we go. The scope hasn't captured the maximum potential of voltage available but we've got the picture. The voltage is at zero. We switch on, the voltage should rise to just under four volts, but in getting there, we get a pile of interference as the magnetic field around the coil establishes itself, and it takes time to get a steady voltage pattern um, across the coil. Right, I am now going to add the iron core into the mix. I'll reduce the current flow, run the scope again, switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off, switch, switch on, I'll take that. So switching on, there we are, zero volts, we switch on, the voltage should rise to um, around about two volts, it goes well above that, the scope is showing around about um, Five, seven, eight volts of peak voltage, then we see it takes time uh, for the current to form a steady state as the magnetic field takes time to expand around the windings. The magnetic field opposing the current flow that's trying to get into the coil, that period of time is around about five, uh, ten would be to there, so half of five again is two and a half, so around about seven and a half milliseconds to achieve uh, a steady state. Try and get the switch off. So switch on, switch off. That's lousy. Switch on, switch off. Switch on, sw switch on, switch on, switch off. Come on, scope. Switch on, switch off. I'll take that. So we're now running at our supply voltage of 2 volts. We switch off. And the collapsing magnetic field creates a voltage which takes time to create a voltage, the collapsing magnetic field, which takes time to run to a zero magnetic field, and the voltage is then being 
used to oppose the uh, switch off process so that it takes time to completely switch off and get a steady state of zero volts again around about six milliseconds and on this occasion um, failing to make a good clean break and the scope has picked up a little bit of a spike right we're now going to raise the current flow to a maximum so this is the iron core in place strongest magnetic field I can produce we we'll run the scope, switch on. So we've switched on, zero volts, our voltage has risen to around about 10 volts on this scope, and it takes time to steady off. Again, around about seven and a half, eight milliseconds before we get to a steady state. And then the ripple I showed you as a result of dragging too much power out of this power supply for it to be able to produce a smooth voltage pattern. So there's your switch on. Now for switching off, we're going to get the voltage to fall from 4 volts to 0. Well, we did that with interest. So there's our 4 volts, it falls to 0, and I failed again to make a clean break. So we get some oscillation across the dirt, across the contacts, by failing to make a clean break. But the magnetic field is now trying to collapse. And as it collapses, it generates a voltage in opposition to the supply voltage to try and maintain the current flowing through the coil. And then slowly we get a steady state. That's the contacts must be making again and then breaking to extend my collapse of the magnetic field um, to probably 5, 10, almost 15 milliseconds. I'll see if I can get you another picture which uh, better represents that. So switch on, switch off. Okay. Again, we've got this spiky bit, but we switch off. The current stops. The voltage, the collapsing magnetic field generates a voltage in the opposite direction and slowly returns to zero volts. So that period of time, 5, 10, maybe 12 milliseconds before we're almost on the horizontal zero volt line, that's the effect of Lenz's law. That's the effect of the collapsing magnetic field supporting the voltage, trying to get voltage to continue, the current to continue flowing through the coil. We call it an EMF, an electromotive force. Very difficult to uh, say how much voltage, how much current. The fact is there's a force there which is opposing the change of state, an EMF. This EMF plays a part in fixed coils. It also plays its part in anything that uses a magnetic field. So generators, motors, they all um, use Lenz's law and have to compensate for Lenz's law in some situations to try and reduce the effects of it so that um, things can work smoothly. A motor, for example, uh, the current it can consume uh, will be balanced by the what they call the back EMF, the effect of the magnetic field generated inside the motor by the magnetic field spinning around. And as we slow down those spinning magnetic fields, so the back EMF is reduced and more current will flow into the motor to pick its speed back up again. And we'll be seeing that in, in further experiments. But for now, we've seen... Lenz's law in action, we've seen the fact that we don't just switch on and off electricity. When it runs through a coil, when it creates a magnetic field, the stronger the magnetic field, the greater the effect, and the longer the time it takes to dissipate that magnetic field and allow the current to satisfy, stabilise itself to the steady state, whether it's steady state voltage on or steady state voltage off. You can't just get there you create some magnetic interference and, and that voltage created, Lenz's law, is always in opposition to the voltage that created it. I hope you find that helpful.